For transparency reasons, I'd like to preface this review by stating that I'm well acquainted with two of the devs who worked on this game. Those who follow my podcast, That Beautiful Life, will know that both my co-host's sons worked on Biomutant. That being said, despite my closeness to them, I've done my due diligence to ensure that I'm as unbiased as possible with this title. The title, which spoilers, is already my game of the year for 2022. In Biomutant, you play as a little mutant creature trying to save the world. A big task, right? Well, this is a world ravaged by pollution, plagued by giant monster beasts, while at the same time being ravaged by war between rival furry factions. How you choose to interact with this world is mostly up to you, and that freedom is the first major positive for the game. You can choose to join any of the tribes or leave for another whenever you so desire. You can ignore the story and explore or focus on following the beats laid out by the creators. How you engage with it is all completely up to you, and there's a lot to engage with. The world of Biomutant is a sizable 8 square kilometers of densely packed biomes, creatures, and loot. The devs took this dynamic setting then chopped it full of traversal options from hovering like Magneto to a goddamn mech. What were they thinking tossing so much brilliance in a single experience? How were they able to make it work so seamlessly? And why is it that a title like this, created by a team of about 20 devs, can be so well polished, while other titles with more resources are not? The short answer is that the devs, at least the ones that I know personally, are actual lifelong gamers who were given the time and creative freedom to make a fun experience. Biomutant exudes charm while paying homage to its inspirations. This is a game with a world map filled with tasks like a modern Assassin's Creed, freedom like Breath of the Wild, while sporting combat akin to Arkham Asylum fused with Ratchet and Clank, plus a sprinkle of Devil May Cry. All of the mechanics work well together with an effortless amount of ease and visual flair that's difficult to not appreciate. A good example is the combat sequence, which sees the player strike multiple enemies, then parry one with a stun, then air combo, land with a double blast of ice, dodge into open space, then switch to dual pistols while hovering. That's by Mutant. It's fantastic fluid gameplay at its best. So much damage. All of this runs on what is essentially the same engine as Lord, Fortnite. Obviously, having it run on the Unreal Engine has its benefits, including advanced lighting, textures, and quality of life features for devs, but sadly, players may be too distracted to notice. Most older players who exist outside of the Battle Royale genre can't stand the sight of Fortnite, and unfortunately, Biomutant shares a lot of visual similarities with that title, from the menus to weapon textures. Outside of the menus, it's akin to Ghost of Tsushima in some settings, but the minute its menu pops, its Fortnite influences shine. What I'll say about this as someone who is not interested in Fortnite in the slightest, is that the menu visuals won't affect you past an hour of investment. Bear with it and you will come out thankful that you did at the tail end. Having such a versatile engine also allows for a tremendous amount of compatibility with different machines. The majority of this review was completed using the PC version of the game running on a Radeon RX 6800 XT at max settings 4K 60 frames per second, but the GTX 1060, the most popular GPU according to Steam, will run the game well, albeit at mid to high settings, with G-Sync as recommended if possible. Obviously, everyone has different configurations for CPU and GPU, which will affect how it may perform for you. However, most PCs should be able to run it. What's more important though than maxing out the settings and what may affect performance even more is actually having an SSD. This is because the entire map loads almost at once. Without an SSD, you will encounter long loading times as well as some noticeable stutters when transitioning between segments of the map. The loading isn't an issue once you've loaded into the game, but should your character perish, you'll be waiting for more than a minute just to get back into the action. Sticking with the cons, the game also has no minimap. A crime if you ask me. And there are a few noticeable low-res textures, example flies and moths. Get too close and it's painfully apparent how basic they are. Also, there's a bug I encountered once in my more than 30 hours of play which prevented me from using one of my special abilities. Fixing it was as simple as using my keyboard to hotkey it, then returning to the controller. 
And speaking of controls, Bimeaton supports Xbox and PlayStation controls out of the box with full on-screen mapping for both. Just make sure you enable PlayStation controller support for the DualShock if you grab it on Steam. Now brace yourself, I'm about to go full super fan about all the things I love about this game. Firstly, the narration. It is fully voiced in English, German, Spanish, French, Polish, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Russian, and simplified Chinese. And the kicker is that every voice actor sounds magnificent and can be switched on the fly, which is great because you'll be listening to them and only them alone for the entirety of your adventure. Characters in the game all have different voices, but they speak some sort of charming gibberish, so the narrator translates all of it for you. Each narrator is deliberate in their delivery, taking time to enunciate each syllable properly for effect. It's so good in fact that you'll be able to easily appreciate them even if you don't understand the language they're speaking. I'd even go so far as to compare them to the legend that is David Attenborough. Asks if you were tired as it's a bit of a hike here from the village. He wonders if your Mooma knows you are here. Murakara Kokomadewa, Kanari no Kyoriga Arukara, Scarate Irun Janaika to Kite Uzo. Kaja Okazawa is a Pravdo. Farkobe Mako to Fartitav. Legenda o dorastającym jako wyrzutek, jedno okim dziecku jest stara i przygnębiająca. Following that up with a splendid configuration and crafting system just adds even more cream to the pie. While you adventure, you'll find varying grades of loot, meet new characters, and add new tools to your arsenal. Some will be handy for traversal, while others may buff your immunity to hazardous environmental extremities. You can also trade at merchants or use upgrade benches to boost your favorite gear. Some weapons may have elemental effects or special traits to further enhance your lethality. Due to the game having different biomes with varying hazards and enemy types, the devs have included a handy outfit system. With it, you'll be able to preset certain outfits then swap them on the fly. It's a game whereby most of its elements have been considered by people who actually play games and it shows. Even the story and side quests are meaty enough and well optimized for players who wish to play at their own pace. I won't spoil the plot any further because I think it's something you'll need to experience yourself, but let's just say it's a post-apocalyptic tale about species after humans who may lead their era to a similar fate as their predecessors. Outside of that is a charming with sometimes dark tales of war, family, and of course, fetch quests. There's even a morality system which affects some of the abilities you can unlock along with the story. The time to fight is coming whether she's ready for it or not. Whatever happens, you need to know she loves you. And everything she's done has been to protect you, your popsy, and those she was chosen to lead. So, with all of that to say so far about this game, here's my final verdict. I've gotten to the end, and I've not even talked a lot about the mech or other forms of traversal, but take my word for it, it's just as polished as pretty much every other aspect of the game. Bamitons is a game that pays homage to a lot of greats like Neo, Ghost of Tsushima, The Legend of Zelda, and so much more. It's combat exceptional. Story, splendid. Visuals, gorgeous. And overall other gameplay elements, magnifique. Bimutant is a game that you simply need to play to understand just how good it is. And it's an IP I hope we see much more of in the future. I don't yet have experience with the other versions of the game, but hopefully I'll be able to make additional reviews with coverage of the PlayStation 4, Xbox, and PlayStation 5 versions of the game in the future. Reviews like this one are created thanks in part to the support of spectacular viewers like yourself. To make sure you don't miss out on anything we do, like, subscribe and hit the bell icon. If you wish to support us even further, you can subscribe to our other channels, the podcast at Beautiful Life, use our Amazon affiliate links, or donate to our Patreon. Links to all are in the description below. And I'll see you guys in the next one.